Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Tight Cycling. Um, this is the Tour de Swift Stage 3. So you're using this makeup week to make up for the stages that we didn't manage to do yet. Earlier today I did stage 6 and that leaves stages 1, 3 and 4. And we'll start with this one here now. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to race or anything. This is really just like a very easy peasy ride. We might do the next one. Use that to do something a little bit more spicy, but uh, I have no interest in, in racing here. But we can see if you maybe, uh, if you're able to catch up with one of the, with like the yellow beacon or something. I guess that would be nice, but um, let's just try to find a group. Yeah, again, I'm not at all interested. So yeah, earlier we did the stage six um, and that was quite a long one. It's like an hour and a half. We did the medium distance. And yeah, there was a quite a big climb, the, I think, epic KOM. So we did like a total of 700 vertical meters. Uh, in the end, it was actually a little bit more than that. But anyways, um, so this one here is uh, stage number three. And um, we are, I want to say, in, I didn't even pay attention, <clears throat> but I think we are in France uh, on the Champs-Élysées. And um, yeah, so we are just uh, riding and trying to take in the surrounding, trying to make this a uh, uh, recon ride. So you can always go back and watch the video and see if there's maybe some area where it's good to attack, some area where it's maybe good to stay in the in a group. Um, yeah, I find those quite useful. <clears throat> and that's why I also ride around these courses at very low speed. So you can actually always look at the map at the same time trying to figure out where you're at and um, yeah make a plan for if you have a race on this particular course <laughs> yeah i think so too somebody was just writing that he thinks that calf i think they mean cavendish knows this uh quite well because i think he won this i don't know how many times and raced it how many times so he's uh, probably quite familiar with this and maybe he will even break the record next um, next year if he gets um, if he's going to be at the at the tour anyhow so this is quite a long lead in here uh, I want to say more than a quarter of the of the ride is uh, lead in but again, does not really matter to us. We're just easy peasy going around the course here, barely pushing any any power into the pedals. Uh, the earlier ride we did about 1.7 watts per kilo um, <clears throat> with uh, a little effort towards the end because there was someone who overtook me on the, like, I don't know, mid a kilometer and a half or so to go on the KOM and I think he had then like some 30 seconds or so on me and then I decided to try to catch up with him I did before the before the finish banner not that it mattered but it was still fun anyhow so now this this one is uh, just to shake our legs um 
we will also do the next one, which is uh, stage four. Let me just check where exactly stage four is going to be held. So, yeah, it's perfect because we have half an hour and that's why I'm also not really threatening anything as long as we go at 20, 20 K an hour or above will be, uh, will be able to make those 10 kilometers here in uh, half an hour. And then we can go over to London and then London. Yeah, we'll probably do the London loop, which is 15 K long and 235 meters vertical. Uh, we could probably go for the greatest London loop reverse. Yeah, maybe we should do that. I'm actually not quite sure if uh, which uh, route I already unlocked, which is a little bit stupid. But uh, yeah, maybe if I have enough time, I'll go and check real quick for the badges. Mm, because if we haven't unlocked the greatest London loop reverse, then it would definitely make sense to do that one instead and to also unlock the route badge with the associated XP points, which I really do want because I want the bike. Uh, well, that has nothing to do with that, but uh, I do also want the bike that the guy next to me has. Um, but that you don't get with XP points that you only get with um, riding, uh, being in the Everest challenge and continuing after finishing the Everest challenge and go all the way up to 50,000 vertical meters. And then you unlock the Tron bike. But back to the, um, back to the XP points, those come in handy yeah, just to level up, get more equipment, get better equipment, faster wheels, faster frames, lighter frames, lighter wheels. Um, also, <clears throat> you unlock certain kits and there's only one that I'm interested in. And those are the fire socks. Unfortunately, those are only unlocked at level 50 and you can tell that uh, I'm level 29 at the moment and yeah, it's from level 29 to level 50 is the equivalent of 17 and a half thousand uh, kilometers. Um, and the goal for this year was actually to do 15,000, at least 15,000. But I hope that there's a chance to do more than that and that all the routes that we will hopefully unlock along the way will get us to yeah the equivalent of 17 and a half thousand kilometers and hopefully then we'll be able to go to level 50 and have them fire socks that would just be awesome i always uh yeah, can barely focus on a sprint if somebody next to me or so uh, is having those fire socks on. It just looks so damn cool. And I want that. So <laughs> anyways, yeah, really easy peasy here. Uh, going, going along downtown Paris. Looks like we are going towards the Arc de Triomphe there and the in the far distance and yeah and then probably making yeah then we'll make a u-turn you see the front group on the other side yeah they'd certainly uh, take this as a race because they are you know almost done
<clears throat> okay, so there seems to be a sprint coming up. Which means that um, I can certainly use <clears throat> I can certainly use the uh, the power up, but the sprint says that it's actually flat. It says zero percent, so it must be when we get over this little kicker here. It must start only there. So this is the time when I will then use the uh, drafting boost. Oh, sorry. Yeah, use the drafting boost and uh, <clears throat> oh, actually, it seems like that Cavendish is on this right. Look at that, number six in the sprint. Yeah, he probably didn't care for the intermediate sprint. He's going to go for the final sprint. But yeah, that's quite amazing. Yeah, if I had known that, then I would have definitely tried to stick with the front group. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I have, but uh, anyhow. So let's see where the sprint starts here. Oh, I think there I see the, the green light flickering. Here we go. I don't know. I went out of the saddle. I have no idea why, because uh, I certainly wasn't putting down any more power. Okay, let's just go back to the map. So that I can just before the finish line here can use the power up and then get a new one. So let's do that now. And so you see the small little circle there where the new one is coming through and we are getting the, well, it seems like a small bonus. So let's see, it's probably 10 points, 10 XP points. But again, we take all the XP points we can get. Yeah, 10. So sometimes you're lucky and you get the big one, which is 250. Just recently, I actually got that on, I got that twice on two consecutive days, which was quite nice. That certainly helped uh, me getting to level 29. Although I also did, I think, 330 kilometers last week, which is like what I would need on average to do every week to get to 15,000. Um, actually, 300 would suffice, right, by 50 weeks, but uh, I just do a little bit more if I can, just in case, you know, there will be times when, you know, there's vacation, when you get sick, God forbid, or you know, work happens or whatnot. So <clears throat> you might not be able to do that every every single week. But I also do hope that with time I'll get back to actually putting more kilometers out there before the end of the year. I want to have one 500 kilometer ride and the first half of the year i want to have one of at least 333 kilometers and that would definitely help 
with uh, bringing the average up. So only four kilometers to go. Now I'm pretty sure the front group is already through the finish line. So at the moment I'd, oh sorry, hi -ya. At the moment I of course don't know who won, but uh, of course my money would be on uh, Cavendish. I'm actually not sure if you can just, uh, you know, type in your name as you want. Maybe it's not the real one. But let's see what the closer we get to the finish line, it should then show the uh, the best times. And yeah, then my money would obviously be on Cavendish as long as it is really the real Mark Cavendish. Yeah, but it's all of the worlds uh, just looking really, really nice. Um, I do really like the design of uh, the worlds and the attention to detail here with the couple stones and you know, with all the trees. It also looks as if the trees, they don't really look all the same. <clears throat> so quite a lot of work that goes into those worlds. Yeah, that is really a sign of me taking it very, very slowly. If Bernie, the pace pace robot, is uh, a minute and 18 ahead of me, <laughs> I think Bernie is doing on average 1.5 watts per kilo. And uh, yeah, if I still manage to be slower than him, then yeah, then this is really a sign that the only thing trying to do here is to um, get to the finish line, unlock the stage. <clears throat> With this stage done, um, there's only two more to unlock. So luckily the next one is stage four, which just happens to start in about 10 minutes. And um, yeah, so I'll do that as well. And yeah, after that, there's only stage one left. And stage one I'm planning on doing tomorrow and take that as a, as a warm up for another stage one, uh, but this time a race, uh, two of Scotland. So, <clears throat> yeah, this way I have the warm up for the race, unlock the stage, and therefore I should also be done with the Tour de Swift. And then hopefully I'll be ready to go for the Scottish ride. It's about 15k, I think and 100 vertical meters, so very short, but um, yeah, these races, they seem to suit me quite well. If I can hang on to the front group, which is always a challenge, especially at the inclines. So, but that's for another day. So. Not gonna worry about this today. Two kilometers to go. And it seems like we are catching up with Doms from, I wanna say, what is that? Is it the Philippines? <clears throat> Might be.
<clears throat> yeah, so in the real race at this point, the speeds would be very, very high. The trains would be in full force. Each team would have their sprinter locked in on the on the probably like third wheel or so building up speed and then with time the people would people from the front would get out and then it would go all the way to i don't know maybe three four hundred meters to go and then it's essentially just go 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 and then it's up to the sprinter to deliver All right, and somebody's just standing here on the road. Maybe didn't want to finish. So now Dom's is putting some numbers down, trying to cross the finish line first in our group. Again, no, no interest. So let's see what comes up here. Jean Solisse. Um <clears throat> Let's see if it switches over to the results from, from the, the front of this race. Yeah. Oh, Cavendish only came in 11th. That is very surprising. Okay. Well, no matter what. Well done, all you guys who came before him. That's amazing. All right. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's the stage, uh, stage number three of the Tour de Swift. This was Champs-Élysées, the short one, the C category. And, uh, yeah, you see there's no no routing batch because I already did this before. But anyhow, so that is it. Stay here. So I just want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget, write hard, have fun, tight. And uh, yeah, hope this gives you something. Leave a comment subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care for now and tight cycling out. Bye bye.